welcome to the Fit Diet Podcast, where we'll learn the processes and habits of healthy eating, exercise, and lifestyle. Food for fitness, if you will, with the founders of MindMuscleMemory.com, Miles Betcha and Greg Rando. Miles' expertise with programs and coaching have led him to training thousands of clients all over for the past two decades with enormous success, and he's dedicated himself to transforming the course of fitness and health for many. And his partner, Greg Rando, has his own unique skill set as a professional in the world of bodybuilding, with the ability to teach and inspire all he comes in contact with. Join me now as we discover the secrets of sticky fiber and proper habits and how to implement the MindMuscleMemory.com lifestyle. Welcome in and thanks for listening. And welcome back to yet another edition of the Fit Diet Podcast brought to you by M3, MindMuscleMemory.com, the co-founders Greg Rando and his partner Miles Betcha. Fellas, how are you this evening? Really good, Bobby. How are you doing? Doing wonderful. Too much caffeine today, as you can probably hey, tell, but uh, otherwise okay. Greg, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> how about you, Greg? I'm doing great. Doing great, guys. Yeah, good. Good to be here with you, guys. Glad to have you. Glad to glad to get together Same for you another another episode. So we're going to change it up a little bit, and uh, we're going to we're going to talk about some tactics. I think that um, you know attacking the the physical composition. Uh, can be tactical, right? So we've got some over at mindmusclememory.com. We'll pull up a blog. It says 12 diet tactics that'll change the way we fuel our workouts. And um, so I think we're going to break them down. There's there's four four different categories, but focusing, I think a lot of folks, Miles, focus solely on calories in and calories out, and that's not necessarily good enough to reach our optimal results. Um you know, a lot of times we think we want to lose weight when really we want to change our body composition. So what what are your thoughts on the 12 tactics that uh, will change the way we fuel our workouts? Well, we, we always like to, to head off that, uh, that, that common question of, you know, I want to lose some weight. And, and we try to, you know, say, well, I used to believe that too, you know, that I had to change my body fat levels and do things bit more complicated than that and and it's not nothing to be scary about it's actually can be simplified and but if we if we really don't pay attention and first know are we looking to improve performance do we really want to do that are we looking to you know like i said change the body composition is a way of looking at losing weight but your weight may not change all that much but your body composition may change significantly um and and that's very we used to have a, an image of you know, a, uh, you know, a woman who's a uh, certain, uh, there's women who are different, the same body weight, but different body shapes. And they all weigh the same weight, but they all looked completely different because one was more athletic, one was shorter. So it, that, that whole key term of losing weight and everyone always thinks it's just this calories in calories out. And they, we want to really keep help guiding people is our, is our specialty to say, where is your goal? And if your goal, there's a lot more to it than just putting, you know, putting the calories in, calories out, and making it so that your foods are supporting how your performance is and how your body works. And and these tactics, we we feel like are are more thoughtful because a lot of times people don't consider all these these key things that make up your day. And I, I think that's the way I say it. It has to make up your day that you're 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 targeting around making yourself have better performance right wouldn't you say greg yeah without a doubt yeah we talk about um quality versus quantity a lot you know and uh you know the the cliche here is you know the obvious one is food is fuel for our, our um performance you know just just like fuel is for an automobile and you know we wouldn't go put water in our gas tank or you know, lousy, you know, low grade gasoline in our gas tank because it's going to affect, you know, our performance. We're going to be sputtering along. We're going to be um, having less energy um, due to um, less quality of um, calories retained by the food. And it's all going to affect our ability to burn calories and our ability to 
uh, improved strength. Um, it's gonna it's gonna affect our output. So yeah, it, you know, and uh, uh, there's a good example. As I used to train a girl, and uh, when I began training her, she was prepping for a competition. And she had this diet log um, that really just had her, she had the framework of her BMR, her calories, her daily caloric intake. And within that, her coach allowed her to plug any foods into that that um, caloric, um, those parameters. Yeah. So, you know, come to find out she's eating like shrimp for her protein. She's, she's putting, um, 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 she's cooking it, fry uh, potatoes in the air fryer, and she's um, having uh, what is it? Not cool whip, but um, whipped cream. She's having whipped cream daily, a couple, few scoops of that for for uh, some sweet. So essentially, I mean, she just had a, a poor quality diet, and it really led to her not. She she lost a little weight initially, but her body composi- composition did not change at all. She was just a little smaller version right. of her uh, self that she began with. Hmm. And uh, so I convinced her to let's uh, let's try to plug in some other like foods instead of with a you know whole food approach, uh, incorporating these plant based groups that we talk about here. And uh, the weight just you know just started coming off, and 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 at the at the same time she was able to retain her muscle. So that's what we talk about when we hear at M3 about improving body composition, really about the quality of um, the work, not the quantity. That's a, that's a really good illustration, Definitely. too, just a smaller version of the individual with nothing, you know, just a little lighter, a little smaller, but nothing really changed to yeah. to, to really get the no, objective no. of the goal. You know, it's funny. I, I have a friend yeah. that worked in, in the Mercedes-Benz uh, uh, dealership in the service department, and I often asked, I asked him one time, rather, excuse me, I said, What's the importance and what's the significance of, you know, running the high octane fuel in that through that car? He said, well, let me give you an example. He said, I had a fella came in with an SL500. That's the nice flagship convertible by Mercedes, and it requires a minimum of 93 octane. He said he came in with excessive engine noise, knocking, um, and, he, you know, he swore that he had put the high test in there, the, the high octane fuel. And uh, it got to the point where the top end of the engine suffered a, a, a malady and they had to take it off and the rods were affected the push rods from pre-detonation of a cheaper fuel and uh you know it's true garbage in garbage out whether it's to a high-end car or something that requires a higher octane or our bodies whether we're trying to change our, our body composition but the, the one of the takeaways that I, I took away from that uh story from my friend was that if this fella could afford a hundred twenty thousand dollar convertible why is he cheaping out for 20 cents a gallon on fuel <laughs> and you think Good about point. that. You Good think point. about that. You know, when we have we have this um, bio mechanism that's a, you know state of the art. It's the crowning jewel of creation, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, at least it ranks right up there, right? The human body that we walk around. Why would we want to mm-hmm. put sub uh, par uh, fuel in our system? So, really crazy. But um, you know, it says mm-hmm. here if we want better well, results. If we want better results, we have to start fueling our workouts for the results that we desire. If we want that athletic form, right, Miles? We need yeah. to fuel our body for yeah. it. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of that, you know, desired outcomes and how we would attack it uh, with these 12 tactics, like a pre-workout, for instance. Sure. Well, I was, and you, you said about the, the story of um, she was just not fueling at all anything for her muscles so even though her body sort of changed the smaller version of herself but you didn't see any transformation of the muscle tone or the structure of the or maybe even the you know the performance of that muscle mm. and and when we look at like a pre pre-workout the you know what we what we would want to not do is we would want to not go in to a workout being completely um, uh, fat, you know, so much empty. We wouldn't like certain times of the day. We can we can certainly um, go on our reserves. We have our bodies have amazing capabilities, like you said, by But we're going to go into say to change our muscle tone and make our muscles perform and adapt to that to that resistance training that we're doing. We would we'd like to have some type of fuel in our body, but you know the difference between like a a 16 of sugary drink, which spikes our insulin up 
and and just sh- shocks our system and and drops our blood sugars way down and, and stores it as fat versus something like we have our pre pre workout. If we have something that we can have a little fiber in it, so okay. you know that's why if we if we've had in the morning if we're going to work out with our weights and say it's at ten o'clock in the morning or I don't know, like five o'clock in the afternoon. If we've had something in the day with some fiber, with a sticky fiber, and, and where we can sustain a, a slow digestive process with, with some, we've drank some water, you know, we haven't had that, that uh, we have very limited sugar uh, so that our insulin stay nice and uh, out, of that, <clears throat> out of that crazy, you know, push the blood sugar down zone, then we're going to have a workout which we can perform well with our muscles. Yes, we perform sense. well with our muscles. We'll see the adaptation. Now, our bodies. Uh, some people have this this thing, and yeah, you need to change the workout all the time because your body gets used to it. But the fact is, is your body has to adapt to. It takes a long time to adapt the body and the muscles to specific patterns and build that. So if you don't fuel your body to develop that adaptation to keep working that same muscle pattern over and over again, you're not going to be able to get that change and that transformation. So that's uh, the pre-workout is so important for. Gotcha. Yeah. I know, Greg, when you go to train um, for your competitions, being an IFBB pro, um, you definitely have to pay close attention to hydration and in your pre-workout because you know as the as the time goes on and you get closer to stepping on the stage, your workouts become that more critical and that more important. You find that it's the same, um, you know, in terms of you know drinking, doing the same pre-workout yeah. routine. Yeah, absolutely, Bobby. You, you know, your output is so consistent and so intense. Um, for such a period of time, you know, no matter what event or sport you're, you're conditioning for, um, that it's important to have that, like that vision, uh, like we talked about last time, you, ha- you know, that, that whether it's the menu or, or just a, um, just to ha- have a vision of what you are going to do, um, uh, from the time you get up and, and until, it, you know, throughout the day of accomplishing the tasks and, Part of that is getting out in front of your hydration and nutrition um, like to that. provide energy and, uh, you know, energy to put you over. I mean, I always think of a, you know, just like a wilted plant, right? You, you, you're, you're a wilted <laughs> plant and you can douse it with water and come back in a few minutes and it's all puffed up and, you know, um, happy, um, <laughs> you know, vibrant and happy. happy and, I know. Yeah. yeah. It's like in the morning we get up and we're a little dehydrated now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not only not only to feel better as we hydrate, you know, physically and you know have our our, our digestive system um, put at ease, but also to get the organs uh, going, um, you know, which need a lot of hydration um, to to maintain their performances. So the uh, the hydration, of course, to get to keep the uh, the muscles hydrated and uh, give, provide energy. And then, like, you know, Miles, and uh, you guys have already talked about those those fiber-based foods where, <clears throat> you know, I used to be one, what should I eat? What should I eat for a workout? What's the best thing? And, you know, you're thinking sugar or you're thinking, you know, we tried it yeah, even naturally. back in the day, you know, we tried, yeah, you know, we tried to think natural sugar or foods, but sugar, sure. And, and, and that's great, you know, a piece of fruit. If you, if you have short term, if, if you need a snack, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes before you work out, a, a piece of fruit or something easily digestible is good. But if we have time to, you know, as it's to get out in front of it and, and, and provide nutrients and get those blood sugars uh, to, to good maintenance levels for energy throughout the day, you know, it's getting those fiber foods in. Um, hour or two before our workout, and that's gonna that's gonna provide us with um, good level br- blood sugar, and that's what that's what we you know helps translate into the output that we talk so much about at M three. It's all it's all about output. It's not always just about calories in, calories out, because the quality of those calories is what matters, and the output. Uh, is directly affected whether or not we're, you know, driving through the legs with the, the, the muscle metabolism that's 
we have to, to burn the body fat in those areas that would just create uh, an intense, you know, rev of the, the metabolism or whether we're, we're trying to get stronger in the gym and we need those that put in the muscles to push us through plateaus so we stimulate more strength and create inroads for, for the future. Mm. So, yeah, so, so all that has been, you know, a lot of questions answered for me throughout the years with, with uh, the new plant-based approach that we've taken here, the fiber-rich pro- approach. Which you can find at uh, mindmusclememory.com, um, quite a few articles uh, pertaining to that. Now, during the workout, so let's just recap, if we could, for the folks. Pre-workout, we're going to add some fiber to our pre-workout snack, um, sustainable, right? So, and we're going to also hydrate. Uh, but we're not going to do it with a 16-ounce uh, energy booster drink or anything like that. If we need to have a piece of fruit, something like that, quick digestible, fast-acting, that's okay. Now, during our workout, um, we work out for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, whatever it might be. Uh, Miles, what are, what is the keys? Uh, you know, what's the, how do we optimize uh, our fuel during our workout? Uh, well, the tactics that we like to talk about during the workout is it, it, if your range of working out is somewhere in that, you know, 30, 45 minutes or up to an hour, an hour and 50, you know, just basically like Greg said, hydrating and keeping your, your muscles, um, the water coming into them because, you know, within 10 minutes of a workout, if you don't, if you don't continuously focus on keeping yourself hydrated, you know, 35 minutes into a workout to 45, you could find yourself just wilting away. Because every chemical reaction of a muscle contraction, right? A muscle contraction is it needs water to to take that to be there when that when that chemical process happens, and and so we could wilt. We really need to keep ourselves hydrated along that whole course. And then if we if we're going over an hour, you know that's when our electrolytes are, are. We may need some energy requirements after that. And in here, in the basic process that I always like to, to sort of lean on is that what what do we do if we're going to go out to hike for four hours on an afternoon or a morning hike? Everybody kind of knows this whole theme of a trail mix, right? Sunflower seeds, almonds, uh, craisins, right, or, or right. Dry, raisins, or you know, these are these new, new uh, fiber, sticky fiber, uh, fiber based. These are just going to trickle in some energy. And we're not having a whole meal of them, obviously, right? <laughs> we're just mm-hmm. having, you know, maybe something to give us some, you know, some some sticky fire, but a little bit of energy. Like Greg said, a piece of fruit is not is 60 calories versus, you know, a 16-ounce drink is going to be 400 calories of sugar. So the, the sugar and the quality there is the apple, 60 calories, and maybe a lot of the sugar is going to be coming in with that fiber. So, you know, having those those small amounts and the also balancing the electrolytes, those are so important to just keep going. If you're going past that hour, hour and 20 minutes, hour and 45 minutes, yeah, you're going to need something yeah. to, 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 to be really focused on maintaining that hydration and that energy levels in the, in the blood. Gotcha. Gotcha. So working out, <clears throat> we want to stay consistent. Hydration it seems, it seems to be a, a you know a big part of the the uh, tactical plan uh, to fuel our optimal workouts. Now, once we get finished working out, I think this is key, uh, very important to rest, etc. But post workout, in terms of fuel, uh, Greg, you know it says you know we should eat a post workout meal um, to replenish energy stores. How soon after you get done with a, a typical workout do you find yourself uh, sitting down and getting your meal? And, and what's the importance of that? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I try to I try to get to my meal with power, especially a half hour to an hour at the latest following a workout. Mm. Um, um, and um, you know, it, it is it's to replenish um, you know energy stores and to supply the the muscles with carbohydrates and protein so they can begin the healing process and the replenishment process. Mm. Um, and, and just, you know, replenishing fluids too, that we may have lost throughout the workout. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very important, um, 
to provide, you know, a lot of times people think it's just protein after workout, protein, protein, protein. Well, you know, we want to also replace uh, the gut carbohydrate that we that we burn from the muscles, the glycogen stores. We want to elevate those. We want to spare the, the liver uh, glycogen levels. So, um, and it's interesting, back, this is going back years, and I used to watch, do you guys remember the show Body Shaping on ESPN? Mm, with uh, Rick, the name. Yeah. Rick Valente. Yeah. Yeah, Rick Valente. I, Rick Valente was great. He's uh, just a. I learned a lot from them watching them train. And one episode, they said, "Yeah, what are you going to go and eat after you work out?" I'm thinking these guys. Say, yeah, I'm going to have a steak. I'm going to have chicken. I think I was 22. And Rick Valente said, "Yeah, I'm going to have a can of beans and a plate of rice." Hmm. And I was like, "Wow, this guy is like all the ideal physique that that what I w- wanted to achieve at the time." And that always stuck with me, even to the day, even till. So right now, uh, yeah. You know, a handful of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I do. As a matter of fact, today I came home and I had a big plate of rice and beans and broccoli. And uh, I followed it up with some um, ground, ground, a bit of ground chicken after that for um, in between uh, my, my meals here to provide a little extra protein with my contest prep. Uh, so, so, you know, providing your body with the balance those carbohydrates and the, uh, uh, and some protein and, and of course quality, you know, the, the quality sources of food and, mm. uh, I t- t- touch back on Bobby, you mentioned it about, um, in, in, in the pre-workout and even, even during the workout about the, um, the energy drinks, because how common is it for, you know, everybody walking in the gym with a bottle of this or, a can, a bang, this and that, and everybody's got these energy drinks. And when they talk about getting ready for their workout and getting energy, everybody's talking about stimulating energy, some some coffee or um, these mm. these nervous system stimulants. So it, and it's, I always think, wow, it's just it's just a different approach. You're you're trying to rid your system and create, you know, um, nervous system energy that is going to rev you up, but it's not going to it's not going to affect the output in the right way I think it's gotta you know and we tend to think too. about taxing on your system yeah we think mm. about providing yeah g- gaining energy for our workouts by you know using foods to fuel our workouts and and by the way you know a lot mm. of times you know those caffeinated loaded beverages that give stimulate people's energy they lower blood sugar so they they tend to do the opposite of what we want to do so they can not only lower blood sugar but they dehydrate you so they're counterproductive you know um to a lot of the things we're talking about here in terms of fueling the muscles with quality of food and re- and maintaining good hydration levels so you know, to have a little caffeine, a little coffee, a little kick here and there is not too bad. But to overdo it, to um, feel like that's where your energy sources come from, I, 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 I hate to see that. And, Miles, you told me years ago, mm-hmm. because I, we, all these products would come out, and I'm like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? You're like, I still remember in my kitchen at college, you're like, yeah, I, I like to rely on my own energy. And it got me thinking, you know. It's like, yeah, you know, I mean... Look at this cup of coffee here. I don't have to always rely on, you know, getting a, a big one here at Dunkin' Donuts to get me through a workout. Mm. You know, so yeah, it, it's it's rely the um in and like you said, uh, it, so a lot of sometimes people are using them. Oh, it's going to help me focus on my workouts, so it's going to help me with my blood sugars or my. I think the you know the other one, of course, is going to help me with my nitrous oxide or so many different. Mm you know, drinks and things that have come out, but, but there really comes down to is that, you know, is listening to your body. If my energy is going low, I'm, I'm, what did it go low from? Yeah. Yeah, What did it go low from? Yeah. So, so maybe I didn't eat right today or I'm not hydrated enough. I feel wilted, right? I need to slow down the workout just for 15 minutes and drink, you know, an extra, an extra 18 ounces of water. And, and see if I can revive myself because I was just dehydrated and then I feel good and go on my own energy to go for another 25 minute work of that workout. Right. Mm. So mm. I, I, you're, it's so true that you, you, it's part of realizing where you are in your own recovery. Um, and we like to have that energy, you know, energize, engage and elevate and work through that. But it has to be that rest that rest phase of it too. And you, you got to be listening to yourself 
through that process and and using tactics to make sure it's like you said, Greg, it's your own energy, right? It's my own energy that's making me get an hour into this workout and still feel um, amazing with the, the, the repetitions or the, the, output, the yeah. blood flow and, the, and everything else. Yeah. Energize, exactly. engage, and elevate. I love so, that. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but, the, but to touch on that post-workout, Greg, that you said, it's, it's so, so true. Like I, um, that I used to, you know, believe in so many people do that when you say plant based or you're going to go vegetarian or something, you know, our, our sticky fiber diet, our plant-based red routine doesn't mean you, you just don't have to eat meat. It's, it's, or, or things like that, but it's, you, you can de- to define for yourself how much plant-based, you know, you want, but the, you know, obviously clearly we want the majority to be plant-based because, you know, we don't ever see at least until somebody comes up and tells me or shows me, uh, we don't ever see somebody that is not plant-based that has been just eating a Atkins diet or a this you know more meat diet or all fat diet. When they can come up and say, "Look at the muscle structure I have. Look at the leanness I have. Look at the energy levels I have. I, I'm I'm now a you know performing at a pro athlete level." And, and all I've been doing this for, you know, eight years, 10 years, my, my life, then, I mean, we just won't, it's not how our, our, like you said, our human anatomy, our dynamics, our, our energy system of our bodies work. So we have, you know, plant-based is plant-based, but yes, it doesn't mean we have to be eliminated. It's up to you how much meat products you have. I wanted to touch on that for that okay. post-workout. Yeah, no, that, that's important. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just to touch real quick back on the, uh, the pre-workout and during the workout with a 16 ounce drinks. And we'll leave it be because I think uh, we've mentioned it before, but it, it bears it mentioning it. It's worth mentioning again, 400 calories. Mm. I mean, that's totally counter mm. counter to what, you know, you're, you're trying to do, it, it, you know, um, just, well, it's, well, the programming, it's true. Right? It, it's true. But that, but then some, some will say, and I've come run across it that this is a zero calorie drink. And, mm. and I said, well, it, but the but the the artificial sweeteners in that have yes. been shown yes. in in study and everything else that they affect your digestive bacteria. Yeah. They they produce mm-hmm. upset in your digestive bacteria, and and again it's like you so you're doing it not for the calorie energies you're just doing it for the mental focus energy. But really, if you can't rely on, it, then you've got to look at what your really goals are. Yeah. You know so. So once in a while, people say, "Yeah, this is low low calorie." You say, "Well, look at all the junk in there, though. It's all it's all processed at the factory, made you know, and it's going to disrupt your your own your your own biome, your own digestive bacteria." Yeah, crazy. So, so in in between, it's, it's workouts, really <laughs> it, it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It, it's when you think about it. Um, you know, and, and again, it, it, that seems to be the theme and the mindset. And I can't ca- count on, you know, how many people come in with different colored drinks and different cans from different manufacturers, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and and, and yeah. you know, all under the guise of, you know, look, I'm a, I'm a competitor or I'm a physique, you know, I'm looking to get a gain aesthetics and, and well-being and all this. And it just flies in the face. Um, in between yeah. our workouts wraps up the, uh, the last three points, I think, um, so now, you know, there's always going to be a time for, well, I also want to touch on rest if we could, but in between our workouts, sure. Greg, um, there's three items to click on, I would think, right? Yeah. Sorry, about plant-based. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I lost you guys for That's a second. okay. No problem. Um, we lost you, too. Did, did you call on me? <laughs> I did. Yeah. And you were, you were uh, not paying losable. attention. He, he was saying that in, you were saying, Bob, that in between workouts, like the three tactics are eat plant based, fiber rich meals, and oh. two limit sugar processed food intake, and mm-hmm. three limit alcohol uh-huh. consumption, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, the, the, that's, that's really the, uh, the, you know, the flagship here um, program here at M- M3 um, is, is the. Uh, the uh, sticky fiber uh, plant-based eating plan. And, um, you know, back in previous episodes, we talked about, you know, I I talked about what it's meant to me in my life. Um, 
uh, overall energy, not just even in the gym, uh, but as, uh, as well as my physical performance and not to minimize the mental clarity and focus that it also provides. Um, but, but, you know, the, the, the other benefits that go along with it are the, you know, I always like to say the sustainability, you know, help give us long lasting, steady energy throughout the day, uh, by leveling our blood sugar, boosting our metabolism, um, and, and just trying to stack these meals up. I say to people, you know, get up in the morning and, uh, and start beginning with a breakfast and then, then your, your lunch and dinner and, and snacks in between, try to include these fiber rich foods and it'll just be amazing to see um the the energy you have physical and mental energy you can sustain day in and day out and again today somebody asked me do you eat really good and you know people ask me all the time i i eat really good i follow the plan i eat it but i i like sweets and, and i stick them in i don't deprive myself of an alcoholic beverage now and then either um but if we can if we can you know have a um, have a routine that that in, incorporates these these combined plant based nutrients and build these meals and stack them up routinely one after the other day after day. Mm-hmm. It, it's just it's just constant uh, rewards. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 as we know, we're going to minimize the the processed foods. And we talked about it just now how you know I like sweets, but small doses. The alcohol too, very small doses. We, you know, we've all seen, okay, it's not working for you. You're not losing the weight. Well, are you, are you still having that, that, you know, that bourbon every night? Because I'm pretty sure if we cut out that, which is 20% of your calories, you know, that, that we could probably, you know, gain some more inroads. So there's everything in moderation, but we have to figure out, you know, where our sticking points are. And um, mm-hmm. and then naturally hydration, you know, keep our digestive system. We're absorbing, we're getting the benefits of these foods and the fibers, moving these toxins through us, creating mm. optimum digestion yeah. and, and hydration through the days. And and I do this when I get up and I start with my lemon and lime water, um, big big a uh, big container of that for hydration. I go right to my my plant based smoothie with my uh, seeds and fruits and vegetables and some uh, vegan uh, protein in there. And then I follow up that with my first meal, my my grains and uh, my fruits and nuts and seeds and uh, mm-hmm. uh, some eggs for an, a little extra protein after that. And then just continue these meals throughout the day with snacks that include apples and, and fruits and nuts and things like that. And it's it, it just the energy. I have more energy now than, than I did 10 and 20 years ago, you, you know, sort of mm. sustained through each day without, without even trying. So. Right. You know, it it just translates not only into the gym, into our hobbies, into our uh, athletics, but into life so 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 prominently. Mm. Agree. These principles. Agree. So we've we've touched on the twelve tactics that change the way we fuel our workouts <clears throat> via excuse me via pre workout and uh, during our workout, our post workout, in between workouts, and though it's simple. These tend to be areas that, you know, many of us struggle with. We struggle to eat more fiber, to fill our plates and bowls with plant-based foods, and to eat enough protein. Also, many of us don't realize, you know, how much we limit ourselves by eating too much sugar. And, and again, like you said, uh, drinking too much alcohol and not limiting that. It says, so if we want to fuel our workouts the right way, we have to, you know, we must implement these tactics. And at M3, the folks at uh, mindmusclememory.com, uh, the staff, they focus on integrated training approach, an integrated training approach. What you eat is the cornerstone to your success. So I would encourage you to contact mindmusclememory.com today to learn more about how they can help you guide, help and guide you towards a greater success by implementing all the above tactics. So they've got uh, the M3 coaches over there. Of course, you've got Miles and Greg at the at the standby and they're there to guide you toward your next victory so fellas yeah, i think that excellent. wise words that were uh, spoken today and um so i have to limit my alcohol consumption okay and i gotta lay off the sugary <laughs> drinks and i can't eat all right i'll tell you guys you limit. Should... just just limit <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's all good. I'm so happy to, uh, you know, bring this uh, 
to the podcast, this information, I would encourage everybody to get over to mindmusclememory.com. And you have been listening to another episode of the Fit Diet Podcast brought to you by M3, Miles and Greg. And until next time, take good care. And thanks for listening. Thank you.